TTRGV, welcome to your tape. So my college experience started here at my local community college and my whole life I felt like I was supposed to be the one in my family to get out of this town, leave for college and just, you know, live life. But oh man, I quickly learned that doing big things requires big money, which I did not have. My older sister was attending school here at the time, so I decided to also just come here and I guess sort of figure things out. One of my fondest memories about coming here was walking through campus and just blasting the Hamilton soundtrack through my earphones on my cracked iPhone success because it was 2016 and I was absolutely hating life. But something about listening to the Skylar sisters while walking through campus just made everything that much better. sit here outside or inside the library and I would just like watch my friends snapchat stories of them off in college decorating their dorm rooms going to parties and doing all that stereotypical shit and I was here bored as hell occasionally browsing a certain gay dating app that ended up drastically affecting my mental health I got my first HIV test ever here on this campus and I'm so glad I did but you can only imagine how terrifying it must have been for an 18 year old to do that for the first time I remember I would occasionally walk into the student activity center here and it's like super tiny um, and there's like not like a student union or anything it's just like a tiny cafeteria but I would always see people like having fun and I would just be like so jealous like I want friends too I literally haven't stepped foot here in almost three years let me tell you about the smell y'all it is uncanny I wow the trauma not really but you know <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and just completely bash community college because I realize now that coming here was probably for the best. I mean, I saved so much money on classes and the classes here were like fairly easy. I mean, I got an A in college algebra. Like, yes, me, the communications major, like got an A in math, groundbreaking. And there was always something nice about getting paired with like a 30 or 40 year old for a group project or equally a 16 year old taking dual enrollment. But in hindsight, I started here to figure things out and that's exactly what I did. And for me, there was always a sense of community and experience that I was not getting here. And I knew from the absolute beginning that I was going to transfer. Hi, I'm editing and I want to add more here. So I also now know that I shouldn't have been ashamed of going to community college in the first place. Invalidating community college is so ugly and I'm not here to do that. I also recognize that transferring to a four-year university is not a feasible option for everyone. At the end of the day, everybody has their own individual college career path and this is just mine. And so a year and a half goes by, I pick up my GPA as much as I could, I fill out all the paperwork and in the spring of 2018, I finally transferred. To here, my now alma mater, the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Home of the vaqueros and my anxiety. The place that brought me stress, but above all, a very interesting experience. Now this wasn't my first choice actually, I applied to other universities in the state and I got in, but I ultimately decided to just stay in my local region and save all the money that I can. And spoiler alert, I did. I graduated debt free and I'm forever grateful and I feel immensely privileged. So because I transferred here in the spring, I didn't really get the chance to soak it all in, you know, like I didn't have an orientation, I signed up for classes on my own, did all my own research on campus, and I still managed to get lost my first day here, which is so insane to think about now considering the fact that I now know this campus pretty much like the back of my hand but here's a tip for any incoming freshman just stay on the Bronx trail like it's the yellow brick road of campus it'll take you to wherever you want to go <laughs> now I know that it's a common misconception that you really can't have that stereotypical college experience in a commuter school but I'm here to tell you that you very much can at least if you wanted to like I knew from the moment that I decided to transfer here that I was going to be involved but I'll be honest and say that my first semester here when I tried to get involved it flopped and I'm just gonna blame it on my mental health honestly and also my first semester schedule was a complete mess because I registered for classes late like I would have class at 9 a.m. and then not again until like 7 p.m. that first semester I even had lab on a Saturday morning awful just awful but everything changed when Greek life attacked so one very hot day on the first week of the fall semester I was approached by a compelling group of heterosexual men asking me if I wanted to join their fraternity I'll be honest and say that Greek life has low-key always been an interest of mine in the very back of my head but I was never really sure if it was for me or let alone I was for them. <laughs> so eventually I did my research, talked to a couple fraternities on campus, and then decided to rush in the fall of 2018. If you don't know what rush is, basically fraternities host like these week-long events that you go to and you get to know them, they get to know you, and then they decide 
if they want you to join their organization, and surprisingly enough, they did. I got an invitation back, otherwise known as a bid. So I accepted and I went through that whole process all semester long along with a really cool group of guys in my associate member class and I eventually got initiated right here in the chapel. So one thing about Greek life here is that it is fairly small compared to other schools. So when the girls are beefing or something happens at a party, it's front row seats for everyone. Everyone in Greek life pretty much knows each other and for the most part you do get that sense of Greek unity where other Greek organizations will come and support yours and vice versa. Honestly, I would say that joining Greek life played such a huge role in elevating my college experience. I'm not saying that you should go out and join a Greek organization because it very much is not for everyone. And like I said before, there is plenty of extracurriculars and organizations that you could join on campus. All I'm saying is that I befriended some of the best people I've ever met and I had fun while doing it. And yes, I did do all that partying and tailgate thing for a while and as I should because I paid for it. But you know what? It was all in the name of character development. And speaking of character development, let's talk about the places where that usually happened. And most of the people watching this will probably know where these locations are, but in case you're new here, let's go. So I went to my first college party here in this infamous apartment building right across campus. And let me tell you something about the living spaces in these apartments. They were not meant for the amount of people that would be in there at once. So moving on, there was house parties and those are mostly chaotic. There's always gotta be some bitch trying to get on the roof, but honestly, those were my favorite for some reason. So the city doesn't allow Greek organizations here to have Greek houses, but that doesn't mean that people in these organizations don't rent out houses and live together. So it's basically the same situation. So right now, we're on University Drive and there's so many things to do here like go to Whataburger and IHOP. So other fun things on University Drive is the University Draft House which is basically like this restaurant bar type of thing that's like university theme and it's super fun. Have a lot of great memories there. Definitely recommend the burgers. And then right next to it there's a wing stop and then there's also a shot bar where I once took the nastiest shot of my life and went to go throw up in the restroom. And lastly, about 25 minutes away from campus is where the main nightlife of the region resides, good old 17th Street, the place where there is something or someone for anyone. This street at this point is practically historic. I mean, it holds so many good and bad memories for a lot of people, including myself. Like, I had my first legal drink at one of the bars here. It's so weird to see this place so empty right now considering that it is a Friday night, but trust me when I say that this place is as lively as ever when there's not a panty going on. I have very vague memories of this place as a whole, but nevertheless, it was a good time. And after a long night of regrets, I would say that most people hit up a Whataburger or go to a local chain restaurant called Taco Palenque, and it's so fucking good. <laughs> Another fun thing that happened to me while being in college was landing a part-time job on campus. The way it goes is that one night I was browsing my school's job webpage thing and I saw this position for the marketing and communications department and I remember the application was due later that night and it required me to submit a creative video detailing why I should be chosen for this position. So before you knew it, I got a call to schedule an interview and I got hired that same day. I deadass showed up to that interview in this building in torn up ripped jeans because I didn't know any better. I know. <laughs> that job being known as the UTRGV street team, a work study job where I would get paid to work on marketing campaigns, work closely with the public relations department, and post on social media that school events were happening. Like this really was the ideal position for any marketing or communication student, so I was really happy that I got it. I knew that this job was exactly what I needed to improve my resume, and I knew that I was going to get the experience that I wanted here. And I'm not going to lie, it really was a fun job. Like I got to be so involved on campus, like it forced me to be involved on campus. I got to learn what was happening behind the scenes in marketing campaigns, and also I was challenged so creatively here. Like my co-workers were some of the most creative people that I have ever met and had the pleasure of working with honestly. Um, I'm editing our promo for what we're doing for Pride. And... Oh, like, like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, one, two. <laughs> so it'll be like phone and then like up and then we can go, right? It'll be okay. like Ready? Can I do another one? Yeah. Or just right here? You just like are natural. I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I like how he asked, can we do that? Like, you're the one editing, so yeah. <laughs> 
However, there was times where this job proved to be just as mentally exhausting as any other job. So I was primarily the video creator slash editor in the team and I got a lot of videos approved for publishing and a lot of them that were not, even though they were fully edited. Um, I knew that it wasn't personal, I know that this is the way these types of industries work, uh, but it was never not annoying when it happened. But you know what, I'm grateful that it's happened now because I know that this is going to happen so many more times in my career, so at least I know what it feels like. Sometimes it was hard to get stuff done for both school and work, so there was nights when I would do my homework and then immediately go in to edit a video for this job uh, to get it done in time. On top of that, a lot of my homework was also to edit news stories, so I spent so much time looking at my computer screen. No one really told me to put in any of this overtime work, but I genuinely enjoyed creating and so that's why I did it. The content that my coworkers and I helped produce is some of the best I've ever made as of now probably, and I'm proud of it. And yes, I will toot my own horn and say that our content was successful, like our minds. But putting in the extra hours was just so... It proved to be too much to handle as I was taking upper level courses and I just thought there's no reason for me to put any of this extra added stress on me for minimum wage. So I only worked when I was scheduled and as I should have been doing this entire time. Honestly, like I'm so dumb. So how did my journey here come to an end? Well, one panoramic and a rat problem later and it came to an unfortunate and abrupt end. Long story short, and like I said, it was very unexpected and I spent a long time and more than I would like to admit being upset about it. Overall, I had a great time working here. It was fun, I learned a lot, and I guess that's all I could ask for. With that being said, I would absolutely recommend getting a work-study job on campus that's related to your field of study. However, I would say don't only restrict yourself to that one job. Go get another internship. Go do more things. If I had one regret in college is that I never joined student media and why? Why? Like I literally study broadcast. Why didn't I do that? <laughs> So it was a lot of back and forth these past almost two years because this office isn't actually on campus. My on-campus job wasn't on campus half the time. It's about like 10 minutes away from campus and it was so annoying because I would go to class in the morning and then I would leave, lose my parking spot to come to work over here and then leave work and then go back to campus and scramble to find parking all over again and it was a lot of gas. But anyways, so this is where I had my first ever class and where I spent most of my time. Except it wasn't, because my major is in the College of Liberal Arts and I was subjected to classrooms like this one. Ah yes, the good old Liberal Arts building, otherwise known as E-Labs, home to liberal arts departments such as theater, history, and of course, communication. Not to be confused with E-Lab Bend, which is located right behind this building, and it is way more depressing. Funny thing about this building is that I often always hear people complain that it smells in the first floor, and personally, I didn't, like, I've never actually completely smelled the scent that people talk about. I have, like, the worst nose ever, and it never really bothered me, so, I don't know. <laughs> Granted, the rooms in this building are not actual lecture halls, they're more so classrooms like this with regular desk, but I think it was still a very big difference compared to the environment of a community college. On my first day that I had my first class in this building, I think it was actually this room. Oh my god, it was this room. It was this room! When my actual first class was here, I remember, like, it just felt really right. And something about this sort of, like, aesthetic that this building has as a whole, like, it's kind of like vintage 70s, like, with the yellow seating outside and these old-ass desks. I would often find myself, like, romanticizing this building and thinking of all the people that have graced the halls and like this classroom and all the presses and stuff. I don't know, it's kind of inspiring in a way because considering the fact that this school as a whole has seen so many first-gen Latina uh, students, I don't know, it just, again, it was inspiring. Like I wanted to be a part of that legacy alumni. And when I wasn't in the liberal arts building, then I was probably here at the beloved communication radio TV studios where I took classes like audio production and news reporting. <laughs> I remember prior to taking my first comm class here, I was so excited to like just walk into this building. Like I would walk past and just be so excited to start 
doing news stories and all that shit. So a normal day of taking classes here usually consisted of the professor going over the latest breaking news and then we would just analyze the hell out of it. So everything in between the stories to the editing and how everything was produced. And then after that, it was off to the races and then we would have to uh, make our own story for the day, edit it and submit it by the end of the class period. It was an adrenaline rush that is scary at first, but it eases out as you go through the programs. And I guess that's how you learn. I really like coming here and being surrounded by a group of people with the same common interests. It just felt very correct, if you know what I mean. The comm department as a whole is not the biggest and the broadcast majors are just a fraction of that. So there was a lot of familiar faces every semester, but it, it was always great. However, my comm degree had to be temporarily put on pause because due to unforeseen circumstances caused by my old advisor, I found out that I was still missing elective courses out of my major. <laughs> I guess that's kind of my fault too, but. So I came here to the College of Business and Entrepreneurship to pursue a minor in marketing and I despised it. Here's why. Now listen, I love marketing, like I really do, but studying it was just sort of, como se dice, lackluster, at least just a little bit. It's just that I think I had gotten so used to the environment of comm courses that when I transferred over to take some business courses, it was almost like cultural shock. Is that weird to say? I don't know. I think my experience in the College of Business here was good, but I know it would have been better if there wasn't a Panasonic going on, because I know that a lot of my friends who have studied marketing say that they had a good time. But overall, I did learn some things and that's all I could ask for. And also, thank God I had a job in marketing. <laughs> so now I'm gonna talk about a topic that I feel is very important to discuss, and that is the mental stability of an average college student. I feel that at some point, you're gonna have a mental breakdown in college, whether you like it or not. And trust me, I have had plenty. My most memorable breakdown happened in the spring of 2019. For some reason, I thought it was a great idea to take all my writing courses at once. And if you know anything about studying mass communication or AKA journalism, then that's a lot of fucking writing courses and interviews and research papers, etc., etc. So I was a full-time student doing 18 credit hours every week, apart from my part-time job on campus, which was 19 hours a week and more. This specific week I'm talking about, the workload was just like over the top. So I had assignments to do pretty much every day and I had worked on this one specific assignment for a couple of days just to get ahead. So of course I waited until the last minute to actually finish the entire thing. And it was me, my laptop, and a cup of coffee at 4 a.m. And here's the thing, my professor at the time didn't do submissions via Blackboard for some reason. So whenever we had a big exam or an assignment due, then we would have to go to her office and turn in a physical copy of the paper at the time that our class is supposed to take place. That class happened to be in the morning around 10.45 a.m. And naturally I overslept just a bit, but it was enough to fuck me up. And I live about 25 minutes away from campus and parking in the morning is ass. And long story short, I got to her office 12 minutes late and as I handed in my paper she wrote in minus 12 and it broke me <laughs> like it physically hurt I felt ill because I had worked so hard all night like on this assignment and then I was like fuck that like there it goes like that's some points deducted already at this point I was also already late for work but I knew that I had to let this out so I drove to the back of the Walmart parking lot and I just <laughs> cried but I remember feeling a bit foolish for that thinking, why are you even crying? Like, this is completely your fault. You should have finished the assignment earlier. It's your fault for not waking up in time. People have it worse. You need to get it together and all of that. I mean, it's kind of true, but shitting on myself is not gonna fix anything. As a first generation college student, I feel like sometimes there's this immense pressure for you to do good. And when you don't do good, then you feel like you're letting not only yourself down, but your parents and your family down. And I think it's fair to be upset, but it's also important to not be invalidating your feelings constantly because shit like this does happen, man. What I'm trying to say is that it's okay if you fuck up every once in a while. College is hard, it's mentally exhausting, and you should be taking care of yourself. And celebrate those little accomplishments. In case you're wondering, I ended up getting a B on that midterm. So that brings us to the end of the quote, good old days. And I can honestly say that I had a good time. I grew up so much over the past four years. I learned so much about myself, how other people work, how I work, made some friends, lost some, went through various stages of wardrobe and aesthetics. And like I said before, it was all in the name of character development. It doesn't hurt to romanticize college while still being there, regardless of what school you do end up going to. I always say that your college experience is what you make it out to be. And I just so happen to wake up one day and choose a little bit of chaos. As a first 
this generation Latino is very important to me that I do graduate and it's amazing that I even did this because it's something that has been so embedded in my brain like ever since I went to school in the first place. As of now, I'm not sure what the future holds for me, but I do know, however, that I'm ready for it. I'm ready to face new experiences in life. I want to maybe do those big things that I've been talking about doing for so long. And who knows, perhaps I'll even document it and put it on the internet. But as of now, only time can tell. I want to thank you all so much for watching this video and learning about my experience and I would appreciate it so much if you interacted with this video in some way or another by liking or commenting and perhaps consider subscribing. Until next time guys. Hey, I'm just gonna post for a thumbnail.